Welcome to Everyone Loves Guitar, where we sit down and talk with interesting professional guitar players, uncover their stories, and discover what makes them tick. If you love guitar, music, and the backstory of people's lives, stick around. You're in the right place. Hi, this is Craig. Just want to let you know you can now advertise here on Everyone Loves Guitar podcast. For more information, go to everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash advertise. That's everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash advertise. Hey, everybody. This is Craig Garber from Everyone Loves Guitar, and we are with a live real rock star today. We're with the one and only John Roth. He's a badass. He's uh, based out of Memphis, or originally from Memphis, I should say. Guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter. He's best known for his work with, of course, Winger and Starship, but he's actually been touring and recording with National Act since he was 19. He also played with Jim Dandy with uh, Southern Rock Legends Black Oak, Arkansas, right out of high school. He was with Giant and uh, Jimmy Jameson from, from Baywatch song fame, as well as Survivor. Most recently, he's teamed up with lead vocalist Terry Brock to record and produce the Roth Brock Project for Frontiers Records while maintaining his busy touring schedule with Starship and Winger. We'll talk about each one of these things today. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show. What's going on, Craig? All right, man, all good. Hey. Thanks for having me, man. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. So, John, you've been touring with National Act since we since you were a kid, pretty much. What was your like first major gig, and how'd you get it? Uh, well, the first touring gig I, I got was with Black Oak, Arkansas, uh, and uh, Jim Dandy. A lot of a lot of younger fans don't really know Black Oak because um, when when they came out, it, it was you know probably early '70s, around '72. And uh, a lot of great players have come through the band. Tommy Aldridge was the drummer, uh, but not the original drummer. A couple, like a record or two in. Uh, so, you know, your younger rock fans probably don't know about Black Oak. You know, I mean, I'm 51. I grew up uh, listening to music, you know, really started playing guitar, really honing on music in the uh, mid-70s. Probably picked up my first guitar in uh, 77. So Black Oak was like the rock stars from up the road from me that yeah. made it big because i grew up in a little town called manila arkansas and it's about oh wow about, a, about an hour and 15 minutes from uh from memphis where i, I live now and i live in the memphis area i actually live down across the state line uh in south haven mississippi but uh so anyway i was uh, born in illinois and uh ended up moving back to where my mom uh, was raised uh, in Arkansas. And so I, you know, I was, they were the, like the guys, the, the famous rock band from up the road. And I, it was funny. I was reading a Rolling Stone magazine article about Van Halen. Hmm. Cause you know, that was one of my big inspirations growing up. And, uh, I was reading this article and it, it, it said, uh, something like, uh, the, well, alluding to David Lee Roth being a mixture of, uh, Jim Dandy and Robert Plant. And, <laughs> Jim Danny from Black Oak, Arkansas. And, and I'm like, man, you know, that's those guys from right up the road. Uh, because, you know, that, that kind of music, when I was growing up in the 70s, the, that kind of music wasn't played a whole lot on the radio. Um, and uh, like you couldn't, like I could play the intro to Stairway to Heaven before I ever heard the song. Because FM radio just wasn't that hip. And, uh, and you know, Stairway to Heaven is a seven minute long song. So you just didn't hear <laughs> stuff like down the radio. I hadn't heard their music, Black Oak. So I was like, you know, I got to I got to research this band. I got to get some of their records. Uh, so I bought like the best of Black Oak, Arkansas. And it's got this girl. I think she's barely dressed and she's holding this jug up. It says B.O.A. on it with water. It's a pretty risque album cover for the for the time. For the time and, yeah. yeah. And uh, and I knew right then it was raunch and roll. The band was pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, you know. Uh, uh, raunchy straight ahead rock and roll and so that's how it's it's just weird that that's how I really first started listening to records was from a magazine article about Van Halen and um, so anyway you know to, to make a, a long story uh, short we uh, ended up meeting I ended up meeting Jim at a festival in Arkansas I was playing with uh, Jeff Adams the bass player that's that I work with in Starship now uh, that's wild and yeah, yeah, we we had a band uh, called Fire Choir. Horrible name. It's just a terrible name, but 
<laughs> we were playing this festival with Jim and Jim and Jim said, just let me know. Hey, if you ever, you know, you want a spot in my band, you've got it. Call me, you know? Wow. So, so, uh, uh, and so we, I connected with him, you know, um, probably, you know, a, a year later and, um, ended up uh, playing in the band. That is so cool, man. Dude, you're 51. You're three years younger than me. You look like 10 years younger than me. What are you the hell? Where, let's talk about your anti-aging secrets. Fuck guitar, man. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I have I have none. I look in the mirror. I look, feel I look every day. I feel younger. You know, I, I feel yep. I feel great. Yeah, I feel great. Same. But um, you know, hair's turning gray and all that stuff. You know, it's just uh, hard getting old, man. No, you, man you know, you look but, good. Um, you look good, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to but, hang in there, you know. know. Just try to, try to get some sleep. I don't know how I pull it off, but you know. I hear you, man. So that was your—that's a pretty big gig as your first like pro thing, man. Well, it was a big thing to me because um, I needed to tour, and I I needed to get the experience of playing live. And those guys were my local heroes. You know, they were mentors to me, mm-hmm. and um, I learned so much about how to survive on the road because it's not glamorous or, yeah. you know, really, uh, at least not on the level that we, we were doing it at. And, you know, unless you're, unless you're, you know, flying in private jets to your gigs, uh, you're not going to get sleep. You're just going to, you're, you're going to have to learn how to perform in front of large groups of people toast, you know, with, with just no sleep, because that's just how it works on the road. You try to pack as many gigs in, in a row, uh, to make to make the money while you're on the road because it costs a lot of money to be on tour. Hmm. So um, I really learned how to perform on a big stage. I've done uh, some gigs with other bands on big stages, you know, festival gigs and stuff like that. But I'd never done that volume of um, of those kind of gigs like I did with you know really figuring you know blowing into town to throwing and going, which is you know throw and go is no sound check. You know, of course we love to go in and get sound check, but sometimes that doesn't happen. So I just learned how to really survive on the road and how to perform in front of a large audience. Rick Reynolds, uh, the guitarist, uh, uh, the guitarist in black Oak was, a, a, a mentor to me. He had taught me a lot about production and layering guitars. And it was the first band I really played the blues in really play. I had a blues solo, uh, in the show. Um, so, you know, I, I just learned so much. It was a huge learning experience. It was very valuable to me at the time because I was ni- 19 years old. You know, I'd never done anything like that before. So you knew you were going to play guitar full. T- that's That was what you wanted to do like straight out of the gate. You didn- there was no like, what do I do with, I'm- with my life now that I'm going to be an adult? Pretty much because, you know, I, I started playing when I was 10 and um, – I just I, I fell in love with it, and and I knew you could make money doing that. <laughs> so I like. How do you know like, that? Because mo- a lot of guys I talk to, they they're the opposite. They say, I didn't know I could make money doing it until I met this guy, or I my teacher was doing sessions, or something like that. How did you know that you could? Well, just you, you know, just out of, out of well, my cousins were musicians, and they and they okay. put uh, my cousin Wade put himself through college uh, by playing guitar playing in a band you know so i knew you could make money doing that and of course you know you look at you know you look at all the big productions of kiss was a big inspiration to me i started playing kiss is one of the reasons i started playing guitar a big part of it you know and you look at kiss's production and and you know you know they're making money but what people don't know yeah. is it costs so much money to do that you know a lot a lot of bands put all their money into their production and don't start making money until after they really start going and then even some that are making, you know, it's the the visual is that they're, they're huge. They're just, you know, getting by and putting all their money into traveling and promoting their music. Yeah. So, 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 so long story short, you know, like I said, I'm going to say that a lot because (laughs) that's cool, (laughs) man. Just be you. I'm going to give you a lot of long stories, but you know, so as soon as, uh, I, I, I really figured out that, um, it was something I could do. And then, you know, I thought, well, man, I want to give it my best shot to, just do this to support myself. That's great. But, I think you are literally the first person from Arkansas I've ever met in my life, to be honest with you. I, I, it's not like a hugely populated place. No, it's not. But there, there's, some, there's some famous cats from around there. Levon Helm from the band was from there. I think Johnny Cash is from Arkansas. But, you know, yeah, it's not like a mecca for uh, musicians and guitar players to come out of. Those yeah. are some great players uh, come out of there. But I mean, it, it's, it's weird. Like Mississippi, Tennessee and Arkansas 
meet all together. So you could drive through all three states in about 20 minutes, you know, if you take the right road. So uh, I, I grew up an hour and 15 minutes from Memphis. You know, it's not like right. I was up in the hills of Arkansas. Sure. And, you know, I, I, though I wish I was. It was very flat and boring where I lived. <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's like the Mississippi Delta, dude. It's yeah. like so close to, to Memphis. So there's, you know, all, there's a lot of great musicians from that, this whole, you know, radius that's awesome think. um most of the acts that you've played with are like you know big conventional hard rock acts is that the music that you like to play because you're probably adept at playing any genre well I, I love playing hard rock music but yeah i mean I, i've been doing this so long it's always fun to play country and uh funk i love funk r&b soul music mm -hmm. uh that stuff's a lot of fun to play i, I i'm big into rhythm guitar so playing Funk, anything with a really deep groove is always uh, a lot of fun for me. And I like to I, I like uh, to chicken pick. I, I I don't put myself up there with any amazing country guitar player by any means, but that's a lot of fun for me too. I like to hybrid pick a lot, and um, I, I love I love that. I like playing you know smooth jazz gigs and real tasty kind of a yes 335 Gretsch kind of stuff so there's a lot of other music i like to play you know that i don't get a chance to do as much because you know i've found uh, this this genre and i love rock music you know what can i say it, it it's 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 an amazing feeling to get on stage and play you know this kind of music uh this rather bombastic you know in front of a live audience you know but there i i i just love to play period i like playing acoustic you know, That's awesome. guitar, acoustic, I like playing acoustic gigs. I mean, anything I, that you don't normally do a lot of, I, I'm kind of drawn to those kind of uh, gigs and opportunities. It's funny. You know, we talked about Mike Brignadello before we got on the call. He's, I guess, I, sure. y'all being from the Memphis, just, he's a big funk guy. I know that's his you know that's what he loves yeah, yeah. Groove Yard. he had a band called the groove yard for, for a while probably still does so yeah that's we, right we, that's right yeah we kind of grew up you know i mean i grew up listening to rock music uh you know classic 70s rock and roll led zeppelin stones hendrix uh etc etc um cut my teeth on that stuff but my, i listen you know i also you know kind of i took in my parents music too my dad was real into uh you know, soul music, Al Green, Earth, Wind and Fire, Otis Redding, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so um, I dug that kind of music from a young age. I remember remember hearing Serpentine Fire by Earth, Wind and Fire and uh, Boogie on Reggae Woman by Stevie Wonder. Great song. And man, man, that stuff drug me, just drew me in. It really did. It was the, the groove and the feel and and I love soulful vocals. So, you know, some those are some of my earliest memories of going man this this music is special you know what i mean so but i didn't really end up playing that until that kind of music until i got off the road for a while in the 90s and started playing just in a cover band around memphis because i i kind of i went backwards um I, most guys play covers and then they get in you know start playing original music but i actually started playing original music first hmm. and uh my own original music and then that was my mission you know and then uh, my band got close to getting a deal, never got signed. So I went on the road with another band that played original music. So I did that for years until uh, I took a break from the road and ended up playing covers. And that's the first time I started playing, you know, funk, funk and R&B and all this other cool stuff. Sure. That's cool, man. I don't know that there is any like, I know you said you did it reverse. It's everybody's, uh, the music business is so you know, um, you're a small business owner, basically, man. So you gotta, exactly. you gotta right. pick up projects whenever, you know, this project ends, you gotta grab another one, you know, and I see this all the time with everybody. You're going to make a living at it. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so let's, for each of these three, uh, bands, if you could talk about how you got the gig and maybe like a fun or cool or interesting story about your experience since you've been playing with them, let's start with winger. Cause you gotta have some stories there, man. Yeah, well, um, Winger was uh, one of those bands that um, of the 80s rock genre that um, I caught. They really caught my ear uh, and my eye. I was watching Headbangers Ball. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> With on, Ricky, it, what was that guy's name? Ricky Rockman? Rick Rock. yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Rick, I'm sorry. Rockman. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I, I probably said his name wrong. Sorry. Uh, but <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> um, but. Uh, so, you know, I, I remember um, Headbangers Ball, I think it came on at midnight where I'm, I'm watching it and 
and Madeleine came on and uh and it, the first vocal line out of, out of the the uh the gate was kip you know, yeah and i was like this is this guy can sing wow you know <laughs> uh and then then you know uh they started showing shots of the band and i noticed it was rod morgenstein um the drummer from winger and uh, for, uh, for actually from the dixie dregs and um so i was a dixie dregs fan and i'm like wow this this is interesting. This fusion drummer's playing this rock band. And then it came to the solo, you know, and Reb just burns it up. It's a great solo in that song. Uh, so I was drawn to, to that band and actually went to hear them perform uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas, because I was gigging a lot. And I was afraid I wasn't going to get to hear him play if I didn't travel out of town, you know, because um, so I had an opportunity. We, Me and my friends went to Little Rock, Arkansas, which is about two hours from Memphis and saw him play. And uh, I just always loved the band's music, and um, I ended up knowing their manager, Doug Thaler, who managed Motley Crue, some friends of mine in town. Uh, I met Doug through them. It was a band called Roxy Blue that was signed to Geffen uh, in the early, uh, late 80s, early, ni- yeah, early 90s, that would have been. Um, but I met Doug. He was managing uh, Motley Crue, and he picked up Winger, and... Um, I ended up getting the audition to Doug, Doug Thaler, and went to went to LA and auditioned for the band and ended up getting the gig. That's cool, man. Was it? Yeah. What, I've met a couple of guys, probably three or four guys that grew up listening to a band and then they wound up playing with them. Was it? Was it really? Was it a little weird at first? I'm not weird in a bad way, of course. Like like surreal, I guess is a better word. Yeah, it was a little bit. It was yeah. a little bit surreal. Yeah, it, it, exactly because. Um, hooking up with a band like that. I mean, there's a lot of chance in the music business. It's all about who you know and where you are. And it's really about getting out there and getting, making new relationships and people hearing you play. And, uh, I just, I ended up, you know, knowing Doug and getting the gig and Tom Zutat who signed the band. I knew Tom Zutat, who was, uh, uh, was a big A&R guy from maybe the biggest in that, that time at, at Geffen. And they both spoke, you know, highly of me to, uh, to to winger and that's how I ended up getting the gig. So you know it's just all chance. But yeah, it was kind of kind of surreal. Yeah, that's good. Seeing st- yeah, seeing seeing them on you know MTV and then getting uh, just getting into the music, man. I'm, I mean, I love the playing. So it really uh, it, it 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 was kind of a no brainer for me to go to the band, even though I had a great gig with Jimmy Jameson uh, um, of Survivor before that. A little bit of a tough call. You know, because I love Jimmy and I love that band too. But um, Winger's music is, is is intricate to play. It's technical, you yeah. know. And uh, it, it, uh, even though you know, in, in a way, I I was always I've always been the lead guitar player in the bands I've played in, or the main guitarist, you know. And, and in Winger, I knew I wasn't going to be that because Reb was the main guitar player uh, in the band. But because the music was so amazing and I'm a team player anyway, I mean, I, you know, I don't have to have the spotlight all the time. And, you know, there was a lot of singing involved and I like to sing and it, it was really, uh, really a thrill to get that gig. That's great, man. Any cool or funny stories? Any cool or funny story? Oh, lots. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this before. I mean, you know, uh, it, it, we ha- we all have kind of a sick sense of humor and the stuff that we laugh at a lot of people <laughs> might not think was that that funny so uh if i think of something a little bit later i'll, I'll come back at you all you right. know sounds great uh giant what a band yeah so how'd, you, how'd you hook up with those guys uh greg morrow uh session drummer um from nashville well he's from memphis from memphis but he's doing, done very mm-hmm. well in the sash, session world in nashville the last 20 years or so i played with greg in um survivor when well, jimmy jameson's survivor hmm. um and greg uh had uh produced a band of mine that i'd mentioned before uh and i just uh, had a good relationship with greg we'd, we'd work together and greg was great friends with mike brignadello they played together in a lot of sessions and uh mike was looking for a guitar player to come in and play in giant dan huff was way too busy uh, producing records and Dan Huff, who I have the most respect for in the world. I'm like, y- really, you guys are asking me to play? After <laughs> Dan Huff? I mean, nobody can replace Dan Huff. Yeah. I mean, I thought he sang great too. And, you know, Terry Brock and I used to uh, uh, make jokes that we, it took two of us to 
to <laughs> not replace, but to play in the place yeah. of Dan Huff because he was a great singer and just amazing guitar player, songwriter. And uh, I was just flattered. You know, I mean, I don't know if there's a lot of place for, for flattery or if it has much value, but I, I was humbled to yeah. be asked to play it and, it, and honored, honored to be a part of it. So you didn't know Mike from Memphis. That's where you met Mike through... No, I didn't because, see, I, Mike's a little older than I am. I didn't come to Memphis. I started playing in Memphis when I was about 15. And uh, so. He was probably you know, gone. Well, I don't think he, he left probably in the early 80s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're yeah. right. Because you're right. He was probably on the road, uh, on the road or in, in Nashville because he, he split pretty early on. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played locally in a couple of bands that I knew of. But um, I never got to see him live because one thing I was too young to get into the clubs. I mean, I had to like <laughs> my mom had to accompany me to a couple my first gig in Memphis because the club owner was afraid that you know I might drink or whatever you know. And uh, so yeah, I, I just wasn't in the scene. I was driving back and forth, and I just I never knew Mike from back then. The first time I met Mike was on the phone, him asking me if I'd be interested in uh, in playing with Giant. That was cool, really cool. Mm-hmm. Any good uh, interesting stories from Giant? Um, well, you know, we, that was mainly a recording project. We never played live. Um, when we signed on to do this record with frontiers, um, everybody, I I was actually had just finished recording a record with winger. We were getting ready to tour for that. In fact, I was touring with winger when we made a video for the giant record. Um, so it, you know, it, it was never, um, uh, planned that we would do a tour. Sure. Uh, we, it was ba- basically a recording project. So I don't have any, you know, great, uh, uh, funny stories from Giant that I could think of because we, uh, we just worked, man. We just worked really hard on making this record and, you know, writing songs and, you know, doing that. So sorry. No, no, it's all good, man. <laughs> How about Starship? How'd you hook up with, with uh, Mickey Thomas and those guys? Well, that that's a kind of a tragic story, um, a- actually. Oh, uh, oh, Craig looks surprised. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 yeah, you remember now? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so my good, great friend Jeff Adams, bass player, singer, amazing musician and singer um, that I've known forever. Uh, and we played together in Survivor, or Jimmy Jameson's version of Survivor. Um, There's a lot uh, of versions of Survivors, like because I interviewed well, yeah. Jim Peterick, and he's got. He, there's yes. like specific language I had to use with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I never played, I, I know Jim and I never, I, I, uh, and I never played in a band with Jim and it was, and I've played gigs with Frankie before. Cause Frankie came and played Frankie Sullivan, the guitarist for a uh, survivor. Good guy. Um, I played some, some gigs with him, but, um, I never, you know, I, I consider survivor, um, you know, Peterick and, uh, yeah. Sullivan, Jimmy, uh, and the the original singer, I have the day. tiger. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So when I played with Jimmy, uh, um, it was started out as Jimmy Jameson band, and then Jimmy had the rights to use the name Survivor, and we toured as Survivor. And I, that was when Frankie came in and did a couple uh, gigs with this. But yeah, you're right. There's different versions of Survivor. So back to, back to my uh, my story. I'd known Jeff Adams forever, the bass player in Starship, who I played together with in with with Jimmy and Survivor, and. Um, Jeff called me, you know, and, and said, man, we got some horrible news that our guitar player, Mark Abrahamian, passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, he had died of just unexpectedly of a heart attack. And I had just got off the road with doing a pretty good run with Winger. And he said, man, you know, we're looking for guitar players to sub and, and do some gigs that are on the books right now that we can't get out of. We're bound by contract to do these gigs. Can Are you available to do them? And I was like, you know man first of all so sorry you know about y- your loss and yes it looks like i'm available to do them so i just crammed the set in about a week wow. and we maybe eight or nine days or something like that learned everything and went out and played my, this this show with them and i'm basically just like man i'm you know just let me know what i can do to, to make this easy i know this is weird for you guys Part, probably one of the hardest gigs I've ever done hmm. was walking out on stage and playing with Starship, knowing what they were feeling, what they were going through after losing Mark. Um, and I'll never, I'll never forget, forget that. Um, so, you know, we did, I did the gig. It went fine. Uh, everybody was so gracious and cool to me. 
but I was just like, whatever I can do just to, to get through this gig, let, let's do it. And um, so then I did, it was on my, the next gig I was doing with them was at Epcot in, uh, at Disney. And the band does uh, three, sh- four shows in a row. So like the second show we did there, no, it was the third show, Mickey asked me to join the band right on stage. Uh, you know, and he said something awkward. So cool. <laughs> he said something so cool, like, "Hey, John, we'd like to ask you to join the band. Did, did we pass the audition?" And I'm like, "What the hell? Of course, I'm <laughs> join, what you're asking me to join Starship?" You know, we, we we never really talked a lot about it before that, even though the vibes were good, and yeah. I kind of felt like it might be going in that direction. But um, that's a pretty cool story. I, in front of two thousand people, uh, Mickey asked me to join the band, and so I've been in the band. Uh, ever since for you know this is my sixth year that's awesome man six years in starship yes Um, amazing one thing i I don't know you we don't know each other at all as a matter of fact but you seem extremely like service oriented you know well i mean you seem like you're a great waiter you know no 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 but i mean you seem to like (laughs) Listen, you're as a as a player, you're 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 in the service business, but you seem to like really, you know, that's you, you seem to like be aware of that, you know, like you're in the service business and you're gonna pr- take care of whatever you have to as part. Of, you know, it's not about you, is what I'm saying. You seem like you're. No, yeah. well, no. I mean, I think you know, it's about the big picture, and yeah. and hey, about the the way I look at it. And Red Beach has always said this to me, my 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 comrade my brother from winger, you know, he's, he's like, you know, we're, we're out there because of the guy up front singing the songs. Mm. You know what I mean? If he can't sing his ass off tonight, um, you know, we're in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's all about the vocals. I mean, this, it, it's not about how great your guitar solo. Of course that has something to do with it, but we're really there to support the lead singer. Yeah. So I'm always watching him on stage and I want him to be comfortable and to be able to, Anything I can do to help out, man, you know, let me know because I want the show to go well. And it's a team, it's a team effort here. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. That's a great way to, I think, to always look at things because, you know, you can get all caught up in, you know, I don't have this and I don't have that and this isn't right for me. And, you know, yeah. complaining about certain things on the gig, uh, you know, uh, it, it can can be infectious. You know, once one person starts complaining about what's not right for them, then it just kind of snowballs and it turns into a, a bitch fest. You know, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's really not. You know, it's it's about the whole the whole picture, man. It's a team effort we're on out there. You know, it's funny you said that uh, you're not. You, it's the vocal doesn't happen. It's there's nothing going on. I interviewed a guy named Cliff Goodwin. Cliff was Joe Cocker's guitar player in uh-huh. the. Uh, I think the late seventies when he was big doing these world tours. And he, he said, he made a statement one time when I interviewed, he said, nobody, n- no song ever got a Grammy because of the snare drum. It's all about the vocal, man. No doubt. Yeah, man. No so, doubt about, yeah. no doubt about it, man. I mean, it's, it's all in, in, in any genre of music, unless you're in a jam band, right. you know what I mean? Any, you know, where, where people solo for hours and hours, you know, <laughs> I mean, and even then, you know, it's 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 about the the getting the song across, and you know, you're you're there to su- support the the vocal and back them up and make it all make it all sound, you know, nice and juicy. Totally, man. So, all right, so you grew up. You're originally from Arkansas, and then you grew up there, and in a couple of other places nearby. What, what was your childhood like? Very normal, no, small town, 2,800 people, small classroom. Yeah, just, you know, wow. very, very, other than the fact my dad passed away when I was nine and my folks were separated from the time I was three. So other than, you know, my mom raised my sister and I, and, and, and I've got a ton of respect for her for, for being able to pull that off. Uh, my grandparents, I was close to them too. Uh, my grandfather was, a, you know, a mentor to me. So that's great. Uh, my, but, but, you know, I mean, I went to the same school for 12 years. You know what I mean? Oh, it was wow. very mellow. It was, I had a very solid childhood. You know, um, my wife and I, uh, our childhoods were so different because she moved around a lot. And she went to probably four schools, you know, uh, before she graduated high school. But, yeah, it was, you know, it, 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 was, it was pretty normal. 
you know, yes. very normal and and uh, solid. You know, very cool, man. What 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 kind of work did did your did your mom do? My mom was a librarian. Man, I She's give her credit for that. That is been there for like thirty six years. So, man, I'm a you know I'm a, I'm kind of picked up from her. I'm, you know, I'm I'm a bit of a bookworm. You know, I hung out a lot in the libraries, and um, I've, I've always dug science and you know history and stuff like that. So, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to when it comes to that. But yeah, she was a librarian. My dad sold insurance and um, just normal gigs. Yeah, very man. normal gigs. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Guitar players in general are big readers. I've I've noticed. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, doubt it. Yeah. So there's definitely there's a, there's a a brainy you know component to a lot of musicians, you know. So yeah, yeah very much that, so. And you're on the road a lot, you know. You get bored and get tired of watching, you know, videos or whatever. I and mean, I've always just kind of been a reader, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the best. You expand your mind. You could learn so much. You could learn a whole career just from reading, man. Yeah, you, you can, you know, and, and, you know, you're the director when you read. If you've got an imagination, I think you said that a lot of guitar players, and I'm saying, you know, a lot of musicians are creative people. You know, they're yeah. very imaginative. So, you know, when 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 you, you've got a good imagination, and especially if you've traveled a lot and you've been to, you know, all over the – you've played in 30, 40 countries, countries you've been to a lot of places you might be reading about so you can visualize these things a, a little bit better and just if you're a creative person you know you yeah. you can you can turn the book into something uh different because you know you're the director producer and the cinematographer all in one i like that man you're the director yeah, kind of cool. yeah i like that's a good way to look at it um do you have like you know nowadays in the music business i think a lot of people have side hustles i was curious do you have any other side hustles going uh, either outside of music completely or like other ways of making money in the music business besides like conventional touring? Well, just, you know, recording, I, you know, everyone has a home studio now, you know, so I've had, and I've had one, I mean, I've been into recording and um, having home studio gear for uh, as long as I can remember. So uh, yeah, doing that, you know, it's so easy, you know, a lot of how I made, uh, we made the giant record was uh, doing tracks in our home studios mm -hmm emailing the finals back and forth um that kind of thing so you know I, I do some studio work at home people will uh i just did a project with a guy in italy um that sent me uh his record to play on uh i do that and i teach you know i, I teach guitar uh, i've been doing that for <clears throat> about 10 years now um and uh i i dig that because it makes you look at yourself as a player and you learn a lot more about how you play through teaching other people songs and techniques and stuff like that. So, and, and you learn stuff you don't normally learn. Cause I encourage my students to bring songs in. So I'll, you know, we'll pick them out on the spot. It's good ear training. You know, you pick out the song on the spot and uh, the solo or whatever, just d uh, different elements of the song. And so it's just, it, it was really good for me uh, to expand and grow as a player. You know, so I, I so I do that. I used to do it a little bit more. I, I'm lucky if I do one day a week. It's you know I, I end up doing a couple of days a month probably because I'm on the road a lot. We're weekend warriors, so we fly out on Thursday, yeah. come on Sunday, that kind of thing. But my day to teach is a Wednesday, and sometimes that gets a lot of times you know during touring season it, it gets blown out. But I, I still like to do that. I enjoy I enjoy teaching. Are you are you pretty good? Are you disciplined about? just in general good with your scheduling and stuff like pretty organized yeah yeah, yeah we try to, like that i do try to do it re you know regularly to, to keep you know everybody uh, involved and and you know up to speed you don't want to grow stale so i i, I try to get i've got like about uh, about eight nine students that i r rotate through and uh yeah, we try to we try to meet at least a couple times a month. You know, I mean, December will probably slow down for me, and I may get in three days, sure. you know, in December or four. But yeah, yeah, we try to good, though, man. try to keep it regular, man. You, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with your schedule, that's real good. Uh, what were some of the lower points, John, or any obstacles that you had to deal with over your career, and how did you like manage to get through them? Either you know, business, music related, personal. Well, you know. I, I would say probably um, just maintaining a balance between work and, and, and your family. Uh, um, I can't think of any one big, you know, obstacle that I had to overcome. Um, you know, just you know, being a musician and having a family is 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 tough. As much traveling as we do, you know. So um, I would say 
maintaining a balance, you know, because you got to you got to hustle and you got to make money and you got to pay for stuff. You know, you got to keep the lights turned on in your house and, you know, you got kids in school and et cetera, et cetera. You know, so um, it gets hard. You know, I love to play. So it's hard for me to turn down, turn down work, you know, because I, I I love what I do. You know, yeah. I mean, I get paid to travel, man. I play guitar for free. I get paid to hustle <laughs> through the airport and connect flights and shuttle here and shuttle there. We play, you know, so little on the road compared to the time that we spend you know, traveling. So yeah. on a lot, you know, and I've got my, my wife, I've been married 20 years who I That's awesome, know, man. love. I, I want to be with her. I want to see my kids. My kids are grown 28 and 30. Uh, Nick and Bianca. So, you know, I want to see them as often as I can and, can and my grandkids, you know, I mean, they grow up so quickly. So uh, it, it it's 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 hard to maintain that balance. You know, when you're home, you know, uh, there's so much so many things that pile up on you just taking care of your house and blah, 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 and just regular life. And then you're trying to schedule in, you know, time with your kids and your grandkids. And then, you know, you got all these gigs and stuff. And I'm very blessed to be working as much as I am, you know, but it's uh, that's the obstacle, man. That's it is maintaining a, a balance, you know, between your work and and the time you spend with your family, because that's that's. You know, just it's really more important than the amount of work you do. Yeah. You know, because you never, you yeah. never know if someone's going to move away or grow up, or you know, your your kids lose interest in you in a while. After a while, when they get to a certain age, you know, and they get older, and then you hang more, and you know, before long, our grandkids are going to be like, oh, they're not fun anymore. You know, we're going to go do this. <laughs> so you, you're trying to, you know, uh, optimize the time that you have spent with everybody, but. uh Still, you know, you got to work your ass off, you know, in this business because you don't keep working, man. People forget about you. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, man. Do you? I have one grand. I have a granddaughter. She's four. Don't. No. Did you find like, um, like I found it so much easier. Like let, raising kids to me, I always had so much. Res I, I felt that responsibility. I took that really probably. I don't want to say more serious, but probably more serious in a sense than I should have. But it's totally not like that with grandkids. It's like it's yeah, it's very di it's very different because it's not all on you. Right. You know, you don't have to be the jerk all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. and, and which is so cool, oh. but because you, you know, it, you, you're you're like all right now the kids get to figure out what it was like when I was saying no all the time. Yeah. And yeah, you don't have to say no all the time with yeah. your your grandkids it's yeah. just, it's a blast and, and it's fun watching them try to you know play my guitars and come into my studio and and it's just it's just there's nothing but fun about it but yeah i mean it's it's you get to loosen up a little bit yeah. you know that's you a really, good way of putting it loosen up yeah, yeah i feel, I feel yeah, the you, same way man yeah because you know i took parenting um very seriously and it was uh the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a major challenge. Uh, and, and I didn't have to, I didn't have Facebook to deal with when my kids were growing up. It was my space back then, yeah. you know, so the pressure, you know, of parents to constantly, you know, police their kids, you know, Instagram and Facebook accounts and what, you know, at what point do they get to have a Facebook account? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, or a cell phone. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's all it's all a challenge, and now you know that that part of the challenge isn't left up to me. Yeah, it's a nice uh, for me anyway. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you're loving it, man. Yeah. Um, is there any like advice you might have given younger John that might have helped you? Or, you mean or, advice? Or, I, advice I got? Or? No. Is there any advice like if you could go back and give yourself advice? Anything you would have told yourself that would have made life a little easier? <sighs> Uh, learn to let go. Uh, uh, don't be so anal about, you know, everything, you know, I mean, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, you know, in a way, if I play a note that's flat or, or sing a note that's flat, I beat myself up, you know, so, uh, but that's what makes you better, you know, so I was really hard. I'm, I'm still hard on myself musically, you know, um, and I'm playing live. You know, sometimes I think of a, the red record lights on. You better get out there and freaking <laughs> nail solo to the wall because, you know, you're going to be hearing it for the rest of your life. Of course, that's not necessarily the case. Well, it is sometimes with YouTube, but, <laughs> 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 but you know, so 
I don't know, man. I, I think me being hard on myself has probably made, made me a better player. But, mm -hmm. you know, there are times when I've been, you know, obsessed with details and, and you know, really anal about certain things. So, you know, as time goes on, you, you get a little older and you realize that, uh, that, you know, you can loosen up. I probably, you know, m made people around me miserable because of how I was. You know, I'm a pretty easy guy to get along with. But um, when I'm on stage, when I'm playing and performing, I get to the gig. I mean, I'm more business. You yeah. Know? Just, I'm just kind of lo locked into – it's all about the show and the people I'm there to play. You know, I, I'm, I'm there. I got one shot to get it right. So, you know, probably just, you know, if there's someone thing I could change, give my advice, it's loosen up a little bit on on details you know that's great advice man yeah, um, I, guess, I don't know no it is man it, but it's it's a catch-22 i get it because i'm pretty demanding but I, i've done the same as i've gotten older i'm like you know what if i put out 95 percent effort am i cheating anybody but it's you know because it's an extra five percent that really takes all the extra energy man you know yeah right yeah the closer you get man to that to, to a, a hundred or what you think it's, is a hundred, that's that's the that's the part that that's that, the grind that, it's the grind, man. It, it it is. It is. It's the part that doesn't make it so much fun anymore. Yeah, right. You know, and I try to. I want it to be fun. I always want playing to be fun, and the people I'm on stage with to be having a, having a good time. You know, and we you know we all feed off of each other. So you got to be loose. You know, I, I probably loosened up uh, over the years a little a, a little bit. You know, that's good, man. Mm, yeah. <laughs> hey, let's talk. I see all of them guitars in there. Let's talk about gear for a few minutes. What's your uh, what's your go to guitar? That the not the one that you have to use for sessions or anything. Just the one you reach for that you enjoy playing the most. And like, what other two would be round out your top three? Um. Well, uh, live I've been playing uh, a Sur. It's a custom made Sur. It's basically S U H R is the uh, the brand. Red <laughs> Beach uh, from Winger turned me on to them. Um, he's an endorsee and, uh, he got me the deal on mine. Um, so that's my favorite ax. It's a strat. Basically yeah. I like strat shaped guitars. I like Fender. love Fender strats. It's like the, uh, ultimate medium of expression. That's sh that, that three pickups, uh, that shape, it's a sexy feeling shape. It fits against your body really well. Um, so the Sir is my main go-to guitar for touring now. I'd say uh, the next one would be a, just a, a black Fender Strat. Single, uh, single, single, humbucker, and all three of them. Hum, humbucker, single, single. Oh, humbucker, okay. interesting. Humbucker in the bridge, single coil, single coil. Yeah, I like to, kit, to maintain the stratty kind of sound of the single coil, the neck and the middle positions. But for rock music, you really need uh, a humbucker in the bridge, you know, for the big, chunky, meaty, full sound. So both of my, my Sir and my Strat are both have that configuration. Um, what's the humbucker? Yeah, I was going to say, what, what's the humbucker? Uh, the humbucker in my Sir is a transition br uh, pickup. It's Steve Lukather's. Um, signature model pickup it's kind of a low output you know for just to dummy down if you talk about uh pickup outputs it, a lot of guys measure them in in k kilo ohms uh but you know really there's some other factors involved dc resistance and in, in the output of a pickup how loud it is you know uh, basically so these are kind of lower output pickups um i like that these days amps have a lot of tons of gain so you don't really need a pickup that's really hot to uh to get that back in in the 70s when people were playing lower gain amps you know the dimarzio super distortion was popular because it was a hot pickup and it drove the amp the front of the amp and made it break up and give you a little bit more uh grit and sustain but these days you know amps are for the last 30 25 years amps are super high gain so you don't need that i like a lower output pickup so uh the transition is in my sir i'm looking at it right now uh and then i have an area 61 in the middle and an injector in the neck those are all demarzio pickups in my strat i've got area 61 those are amazing single coils i can't say enough great things about demarzio's pickups and i have a 36th anniversary paf in the bridge it's super low output pickup it's kind of like an old school paf les paul uh that's pickup. awesome so so th those two are what i grabbed to uh to hit the road with they're the most versatile and they fly the best you know i don't like i, I 
played Les Pauls with Winger just exclusively for a lot of years. And um, we started just doing fly gigs, you know, flying to all of our shows in uh, tour bus way less. And uh, so, you know, Les Pauls were more fragile. We were checking our guitars at the time, and I, I got a crack in the neck of one of mine. And I've got the broken headstock on another Les Paul. You know, I'll, I've, you know, so uh, not from flying, but they're just more fragile guitars. Mm. So, you know, a Strat uh, is a bolt on neck. And uh, if, if you, you know, you can throw it down and pick it up and it may even still be in tune. They're just more yeah. resilient to traveling. So I ended up playing those a lot. So on the road, those are my, probably my third favorite guitar is a Les Paul standard of mine, like an early uh, 70s Les Paul standard. That and my early 70s Fender Strat. Is that like way in time? The Les Paul. The guitar's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. heavy. The, the, the Les Paul's pretty heavy. It's probably about eleven pounds. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's a beef, it's a beefier guitar, no doubt about it. Yeah. Tobacco Sunburst. Yeah, it's a cool axe. So those are probably. You know, I, I've got so many guitars that I could say are my favorites, but it just depends on you know because I'm playing a lot of rock music at Starship and Winger, and that's what I'm on the road doing. Uh, my cover band that I have locally in town. It's the same genre of music, and so I uh, I like playing the strats because you can get a lot of different sounds out of them. You know, is there any uh, interesting stories how you how you got any of those guitars? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, my first Les Paul I bought. I was uh, I acquired uh, because let's see, I was doing a gig in Biloxi, Mississippi, at with a band called Medieval Steel. Uh, and this metal band that I, um, that sounds very metal. I first started Medieval playing with Steel. Coach Young. Yeah, it, uh, I was 16 years old. We were playing a naval bass. Um, something was down with my backup guitar, and uh, I needed a backup guitar. I was my back my my second or my backup guitar was being worked on or something. So my cousin loaned me his 72 Les Paul Standard, which I own now. So. Uh, so I, I walk off stage and I walk back on to play another set and the guitar is laying on its face. Someone had knocked it over and it was still laying there. Uh, uh, I, I didn't do it. I, I would have remembered that and I would have put it back in the stand and freaked immediately. But so uh, the, the neck was broke oh. uh, right at the headstock. And the only thing holding the neck to uh, the holding the headstock to the neck of the guitar was that little piece of, it looks like, like a, thin piece of formica it's just the very top piece of uh the headstock and i was like oh my god this is my cousin wade's <laughs> les paul how the hell am i going to tell him this happened to his guitar i hate borrowing people's stuff because of that yeah. right now because you know w once you, you know people go man you want to try out my guitar i'm like no i'll break it you know and then i'll owe you for it or i have to buy it so long story short you know i went to wade i'm like no i, w I had it fixed Great guitar tech in Memphis named Tom Keckler. He glued it together for me, and it was actually just as good as as new intonation wise. You couldn't tell a difference. But man, I mean, you know, uh, it, it was broken, and I know my my cousin had bought it, you know, kind of as an investment because he didn't play anymore, and he held on to the guitar, and it was worth a little bit of money. So, uh, so I, I called Wade, and I'm like, look, I'm, you know, God, I'm an idiot. Um, I took your guitar out. Someone knocked it over on stage. Uh, no, it wasn't me because I would own that shit if it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bad liar. You know what I mean? I, I, I was like, so I'll buy it. You know, I got it fixed or I'll, I'll return it to you and I'll give you some money for whatever I need to do to, to make it, you, you know. He's like, man, John, don't worry about it. Just let me think about it. I don't know. So he got back and he said, look, you're going to get way more use out of it. I'll sell it to you for what I paid for it. You know, and this is probably 1983. He bought it in, you know, 72. So oh, it was that's worth a great deal. It was worth, it was, he was worth, you know, twice, at least twice what, um, what, uh, he paid for it. Well, a little bit less because of the crack neck. Now it's, now it's probably worth more. But anyway, so he sold me the guitar. So I ended up with my first Les Paul standard because I basically, uh, Broke my cousin's guitar. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So that's a pretty in interesting story. I don't know if anyone can uh, can say exactly that. I'm sure someone can, but it's I don't know too many people that have you know borrowed people's guitars and broke them and ended up yeah. you know with them. And it's one of my favorite favorite guitars. It's an amazing guitar. That's really cool, man. That was really cool. Your cousin to do that too. Yeah, it was. It was stressful as hell for me at the at the moment. You know, having to call him up and go, Wade, 
you know, I, I, bro- I cracked the neck on your guitar, broke the neck on your guitar, but he was cool about it. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I ended up with a great guitar through the stress of it all. <laughs> Anybody, um, any players that you've enjoyed jamming with? Have you played with any other guitar players that you like? Well, yeah. Reb Besides, I mean, Reb, I was going to say that must be it. Reb's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, I mean, because we've jammed a lot. We, uh, back when we were on, there's a difference between playing on stage with someone, you know, and jamming, really getting to know they're playing. And so he and I played together so much just backstage. And on, when we were on the road in a tour bus, um, we brought acoustic guitars and we would jam and play every night after the gig and it was some of the most fun That's we ever awesome, had man. was playing other people's songs and just making songs up. And, uh, it, it rib had this thing called a sig fiddle it, it, and I've got one too. Um, but uh, it's the first time I heard one. It's, it's, it's a, it's basically like a little mountain instrument made out of a cigar box. And I forget the luthier's name. The guy made was making him, uh, was from LA and ribs sounded so good. And it's tuned to, I think open D and it sounds kind of like um, it's real twangy, mid rangey. You know, it it cuts. It's kind of like it's not like a mandolin. It's not like a banjo, but it's in the same family. Mm. It's a mountain sounding instrument. You know, uh, you want to play bluegrass and chicken pick and all that kind of stuff on it. So Reb was really into playing that thing on a tour, probably about oh seven or oh eight. We were doing, and I brought an old uh, a Takamini guitar of mine that I wasn't afraid to bring on the road. Uh, that had already been, you know, worn and beaten, and so we we had so much fun uh, jamming and doing that because you know you get when you're on stage you're playing the hits or the songs that you play in the band sure. over and over, and you only have so much room to improvise because uh, you can improvise, you know, on, somewhat on your solos, and but certain solos have to be played like the record, sure. you know, mm-hmm. and you want to stay true to that. So, um, you know, Reb Reb number one, a uh, couple of my favorite guys aren't around anymore passed away buddy church just local guys buddy church amazing chicken picker i played with him in black oak jack holder was one of my mentors um another memphis musician everyone would know knows his name he did a lot of session work worked with rigandello uh we, we talked about earlier with giant um i played on stage with him and jammed with him some just you know playing with people that do things differently from you is it's always great because you pick up on their tricks and, you know, kind of absorb a little bit of their style. Uh, so those are the guys that, that, that uh, right off the top of my head that I would, I, I could, I would think of. Man, what's the, uh, you've been around for a minute. I'm going to ask you, what's the best guitar and best amp you've owned? Uh, that's like saying, what's your favorite band? Yeah, you I know? know. I'm going to ask you that too, but. <laughs> yeah, of course of course why wouldn't you <laughs> um man you know my favorite I, I got an amp back when i was playing in black oak arkansas it's a marshall a 76 marshall that's a super special amp uh to me it gets one sound acdc you know it's just that's the sound it doesn't do anything else you can't clean it up you can't dial it in any differently uh <laughs> it's just got that what amp that is that uh, it's a JMP. It's right behind me. Let's see. It's a 1976 JMP. It's got two inputs. I think it was right when they were first making the two input marshals. So it's got, you know, it's got a little bit of gain to it. You don't have to crank it up. Um, like a lot of guys would jump the inputs on the old marshals, uh, and do and, and mod them and stuff because the, the master volume, uh, didn't work the same or what, or, and some of them didn't really have a master. I think this is, might've been the first year they, had a master. I should know. Uh, but um, anyway, that my, my probably my favorite amp though that I have now is a is a Mesa Roadster that I've had for about ten years, and that amp is a beast. You is, know, is that the other one over there I, behind you on your left shoulder? Yeah, yeah. I've got two Mesas over there. Uh, I've got uh, the the Roadster. Uh, just got an amazing. It's got four channels. It's got way too many channels. The buttons and yeah, knobs. It is like uh, it looks like a freaking uh, yeah. You can see air, it. air cockpit there. Yeah, it's got. It's really got a lot of stuff. It's not great for live. I like simple stuff live. Two channel amps, hmm. uh, but it's in studio. It's amazing. It's just got. It's just fat and punchy, and it's, it's a beast, you know. So, uh, um, you know, I've got other amps I like. I've got an old. Uh, uh, Mesa solo head that I, a guy got when first started touring with Winker, Winger. It may even be uh, 
hand wired. They we got it before they started mass producing those amps. And so I've got I've got two really good maces and a couple of good Marshalls that I like. But um, I really like my my old my old uh, classic seventy six Marshall. It's cool. That's a hundred watts. It's a hundred. Yeah, all my all my amps are a hundred watts. Wow. All my all my heads are at least yeah. you know. And uh, best guitar you ever owned? Um, probably. You know my. God, that's hard to say. I, I would I would say one of my strats and I can't say which one just because like I said before, it's, it's the ultimate instrument for me to do what I do uh, on. Uh, so that, that, or this, this sir is an amazing guitar. It play, it plays um, unbelievably. It sounds great too, but even though it's shaped like a strat and basically got single gold pickups, nothing sounds like a strat, really a fender strat, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. Rep Beach and I were talking about that. Even with the same pickups, I don't know what it is. You know, it's it has, it's it's everything. It's the it's the wood. It's 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 the the neck. It's you know the hardware, all that stuff. It has to do with the sound of the guitar, but uh, probably um, yeah, I would say the Strats or the Sir. Very cool, man. So I won't ask you what your favorite band is, but uh, top three Desert Island discs, no particular order, and just for now, like knowing it could change tomorrow. Just so like you need your <laughs> yeah yeah. Oh, that's that's a hard one too. Okay, Desert Island. So uh, I'm 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 saying that there's water around and it's going to be sunny. So I want some summer jam. See, and now, my, you, now you're getting super anal. On. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my, my playlist, man. It has uh, you know I like different kinds of music for different times of the year. So okay, so uh, uh, Little Feet, Waiting for Columbus, wow. is a great summer yeah. time. Record, one of the best live records of uh, that I've ever heard. Um, it is. And let's see, um, Van Halen "Fair Warning." That's mm. a good summertime jam record for me for for one reason or another. And um, "Royal Scam" by Steely Dan. Great. Steely Dan is, uh, is one of my all time favorite bands, and um, I don't think I could do without listening to them for the rest of my life you know if i I am indeed going to be on this desert island forever those are are three but you know there's about a hundred other i that i I wish i had too but you know right the the thing i would probably want to do is just make a playlist (laughs) discs and i would put them together out of my top 10 records yeah you know if i I was gonna be stranded i would have a custom disc but those but little feet waiting for columbus royal scam by steely dan and then the van van halen fair warning that's that's a pretty good pretty good shot i guess fair warning comes up on that list quite a bit actually oh man that's yeah. sick that's a that, great album. The, uh, van halen's first half a dozen records are groundbreaking and incredible for me but something about fair warning just kills me man i love that steely dan record i, I like royal all, the, scam all their is old there. stuff gacho, is, gacho uh asia uh, royal scam can't buy can't a buy thrill, a thrill yeah I love man that. dude the, uh, uh, pretzel logic steely pretzel dan's logic, yeah. play, playlist is is unbelievable I've actually got um, Elliot Randall, the guy who did the solo for Real in the Years. Killer. Yeah, he's going to be coming on the show, so I want to ask him questions about like oh, how the man, hell did you put cool. that? Like, how did you that come out of your brain? That was so. Man, please email, please email me when uh, I will. When, I mean, when you put yeah, that, I will. let me know, man, because I will listen to that. I will listen to that. I, I want to hear those stories, man. Yeah, I will. I just made a note, John. Yeah, that's one of my all-time I'm, favorite favorite bands. I mean, yeah. just. The early stuff was just like nothing else, man. It just, yeah, it's like nothing. It's yeah. like nothing else I, I ever heard. You know, pop music, super smart pop music with uh, all these great jazz changes and stuff, and the grooves the and grooves. the drumming, yeah. the drumming and the bass playing and the guitar playing. It's just all it's sick. Mm, really, man. Uh, so this is a tough question, man. Um, most important thing you've learned about yourself throughout your career experience and through life in general? Oh God. That's deep. I need, <laughs> I need a cup of coffee to you figure know what, that out. Man, this is the thing with a lot of players. People are like, I, I once asked this qu- question, and I always get various answers of this, and the guy goes, or like, what do you like most about yourself? And the guy said, it was a guy named Adam Zimmon. He's a Ziggy Marley's player, guitar player out of California. Right. Super super nice guy. And he goes, right. how, how can I answer that question when I have so much self-loathing? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't particularly love myself. Um, yeah. so- 
<laughs> you know, so what I've learned about myself. Yeah, what? yeah. What have you learned? What's, what, have, what have you learned? Oh, that I'm loyal, you know, that I'm loyal. I mean, uh, uh, to my my bands and friends and family, I guess, I guess that would be something positive. Something negative is just, I'm, um, you know, anal and, you know, <laughs> obsessed with details to the point to where I, you know, need to let it go probably. You know, like, like when I, you know, when, when I'm, it's great when you record with a producer and another engineer, because people, you got someone to tell you to stop, yeah. you know, that's fine. It's perfect, man. You know, because of, uh, you know, when you work in your studio by yourself, you know, I'm the engineer, you know, so, you know, you, you've got that to deal with and then, you know, you can do stuff forever and to get it perfect, you know, so, um, you can, beat the life out of something before because to me perfect it doesn't mean always mean that uh everything is you know on the grid you know timing wise and it, it could be you want perfect might be laid back behind the beat you know or mm. or uh, aggressive notes with a little bit of stink on them where it's it's growls and stuff so per- perfect is different to everyone but probably just being anal and trying to get things perfect in the studio and you know that's that might be one of my 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 downfalls kind of like we talked about earlier you know you the older you get you learn to let things go mm. you know so i i would say those two things i've learned about myself now that i think about it i've never really thought about that much before <laughs> yeah most people aren't walking around thinking about themselves that's for sure. exactly exactly um, tell me something about yourself, John, that people would either be surprised to hear or might find a little odd. I'm pretty normal, man. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head other th- than, you know, uh, I like to read and do, you know, nerdy stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm a, a little bit of, you know, a, a, a a, a tech geek in the studio, not as bad as some guys, but you know, everybody's a tech geek now. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't even say that. Yeah, that's you know what not I mean? a, especially I, you know, for guitarists, man. That's, yeah, that's normal. I mean, you know, that's not unusual at all. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've got a, you know, I don't know. I read a lot. No, that's totally cool, <laughs> yeah, man. That's probably about it. I mean, a lot of people don't, might not think that, you know, if, you know, rockers, you know, spend a lot of time thinking about deep things, they might think that, you know, you're, thinking more about you know after show food sex or, drugs and rock and roll yeah yeah drugs, oh yeah yeah Actually, i think about after show food a lot <laughs> i love to eat oh you know what that's it what's that i love to eat Do you think you're, being, yeah, yeah man because, you're you know, slim I'm, I'm fit thin, you know my metabolism is, is smoking and i've never wow. really been able to gain more than five pounds at a, at a time so that's something god people bless might you think strange about me how much i love to eat you that's know? awesome what do you, what's your favorite food what do you like to eat man I love pasta, man. I, but I eat real healthy. I, I like fish, shrimp, a lot of seafood, uh, a, a lot of pasta. You know, I, I like that kind of stuff. It's not that great for you. I eat, I eat a, a lot of salad because the older I get, the more I'm, I, I you know, I realize that. Gotta stay you, regular, man. <laughs> your, yeah, yeah. And your diet, man, has oh, a lot to do. I mean, good God, you know, I've lost a lot of folks, you know, over the last few years to heart attacks and cancer and stuff like that. And, you know, I just think that, you know, what you eat and put in your body is, Part of the problem, you know, I think diet has a lot to do with you, you know, warding off diseases and stuff like that. So I eat a lot of salad and stuff like that. But I like I just I love to eat, man. You know, it's one it's it's one thing that you have, especially when you're on the road that you, you know, had to look forward to and talk about whether it was good or bad. You know, you can you got to talk about something on the road to your friends, your buddies, you know, so we can talk about how amazing dinner was or (laughs) how bad it sucked, you know. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we're all kind of, you know, you become a foodie a little bit when you're on the road, you travel a lot, you get to eat a bunch of different stuff from different countries and all that, all that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a focal point of being on the road is your, is, is eating. It's one of the things you look forward to. So, and I agree with you about diet warding off disease and protecting your health, man. I eat really clean for that reason. It just feels better, man. Yeah, man. And I, it, it does. And, um, I've never, you know, had a problem with, uh, with having, you know, we gained any weight, so I could eat just whatever I wanted, and I did for a long time. But, but I, I, I've always, you know, tried to stay away from like red meat and stuff like that. You know, not that it isn't good, but it's, you know, it's got to stay healthy. We're not getting any, not getting any younger. Not getting younger, man. Nope. Do you have any uh, non-musical superpowers? Oh, uh, make 
uh, make a good cup of coffee. <laughs> good man. That's it. I don't have any soup. Yeah, I don't have any superpowers, man. Um, best thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, my wife, Clara, my get, getting getting married, and 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 you know her understanding that music is my my life and my career and just you know her being so great and, and rolling with all the punches with that you know i have to say with that yeah I, I changed a lot i changed a lot when um when i got married because i don't have blood children of my own I, um, um clara uh, my wife had two kids when uh we got married nick and bianca so i raised them from the ages of eight and ten so that made me grow a lot you know as a person mm. uh and uh figure out a lot about myself, you know, and figure, you know, uh, the good and the bad, you know, uh, uh, makes you look at yourself differently, you know? So that was a big, uh, big learning experience. And one of the, it, probably the best thing I could think that, that, that uh, happened to me, you know, it's, having a family because, you know, I was 31 when we got married and it was just me and I wasn't thinking about, you know, getting married. I just, I, I met the, the, the right gal and it was, you know, someone I just couldn't be without, you know, every day so um so that was big transformative you know part uh thing in my life you know it made me work harder it made me play it it, it didn't it made my music better it made me work harder at doing what i do because you know i'm like man now i'm i'm responsible for three more people here you know uh not that my wife doesn't hold down the fort you know like a freaking champion but you know that it just it changed my outlook on, on life and you know it, it made me uh made me manage my time better you know yeah so yeah. time management is a big thing i mean you gotta you gotta spend time you gotta enjoy your life you know you gotta spend time just like you know doing whatever you you love to do recreational uh, recreationally uh but you know you gotta you gotta focus on, on 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 your music and manage your time well you know and the older you get the, the quicker time seems to be flying by you know we <laughs> yes contact with more people you know more things more events are getting compressed into a smaller period of time it feels like and i think it's really like that too just because of social media and the internet and the way we communicate you know you can stay in touch with a lot more people you can do a lot more things and more stuff happens so you know i think the whole getting you know getting married raising kids at home helps you figure out how to manage your time better mm. Man, that's really good. I'm happy for you, man. That's a nice, I still can't do it. A I nice story. It. I still fail, you know, in managing my time, you know. I just it is what it is. My older my younger son, he's went back to school later. He went he's twenty six, just went back to college and he was saying that, man, I always I can never get everything done. I said, Man, I've had a to do list for probably thirty five years and just so right. you feel good. Nothing yeah. on that list. Not one day has everything on that list been checked off, and it no, doesn't happen. Yeah. If you're lucky, you get to check off one or two, and maybe on a great day, you check off three. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. I mean, I make I make those. I make lists. There's they're they're on my phone, and they're on post-it notes. And yeah, man. I mean, there's <laughs> just so much junk to do, you know. Yeah. And if if I don't make a list, I'm it, it's it's not going to get done, yeah. you know. That's and and, and I get obsessed with doing certain things, you know. I'm like. You know, I could do that a little better or, oh, so, you know, that this, this involves doing that, you know, and you get sidetracked and so, yeah. So, or you get a phone call. <laughs> or you get a phone yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You so take care of this you know, now. It's all about that going back to that, you know, that balance and, yeah. you know, making sure you're working smart, you know, you're practicing smart, you're recording smart, you know, whatever. Yeah, man. Make sure you play this interview for your wife. That was really nice what you said, man. That was cool. Oh, I will. Certainly. <laughs> yeah. Score me some points. Dude. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, but after 20 years, she probably knows you anyway. So. Uh, yeah, I think so. Any hobbies or interests outside of music, John? Besides uh, reading? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like, you know, I like to go uh, I like kayaking, canoeing, snorkeling, you know, hiking, outdoors kind of stuff. That's I really dig getting out, you know, in nature and I love I love the beach. I like the mountains. I like the rivers. So yeah, canoeing and kayaking is fun. <clears throat> it's hard to make time to do that, right? You know, I don't live close to the. I live about three hours away from my four hours away from my favorite rivers that are close to me to get out on. Um, and you know, I'm landlocked where I am. 
I can't, you know, go snorkeling or hit the beach. So that's for vacation time. But sure. yeah, I, I love to do all that kind of stuff. I like the sun, you know, I, I like to get out and, and exercise and that kind of stuff. So those, those are what, what I would first think are, you know, are my hobbies. And man, last question, what has been the biggest change in your personality over the last 10 years and how much of that change has been deliberate on your part and how much has just been kind of like growing along with aging? Back to what we said earlier, letting go, letting go, uh, let, letting go uh, 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 if, when things are, you know, stop being, try not to be so anal, be a perfectionist. And a lot of that comes with age, you know, I, I think, I, you know. Yeah. You go, wow. And, you know, beating, beating myself up over, over, you know, the bridge in that song, not being perfect. <laughs> you know, it, you know, you can let it go now, John, yeah. you know, it's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no one gives a shit, but you, <laughs> yeah, that's, ain't that <laughs> really? the truth? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's probably it, that, that, uh, that probably comes with, uh, just age, you know, and very experience. cool, man. Yeah. Hey, man, I can't thank you enough for your time. Let me talk, uh, tell people some stuff where they could check out. First of all, if you haven't seen John Roth play, um, get out to one of his shows with Starship or Winger at a minimum. Check him out on YouTube or he's got a CD we'll talk about in a minute. But, um, man, he's a phenomenal player. Just great, you know, in your when you're doing your thing in that rock zone, you're, it's great watching you play, man. It really thank is. you, man. Appreciate that. Um, so check out, uh, Winger's got five shows coming up. This month, this is going to be dropped in November. So five shows coming up. You said where are those shows going to be? Yes. Um, let's see. They are in D D D Lima, Ohio, on the November sixteenth. Lima, Ohio, November seventeenth is uh, Chester, Pennsylvania. The eighteenth is Halethorpe, Maryland, and the twenty third is in Las Vegas. If you go to johnroth dot com, there are links where you can get tickets to all those shows and uh come on out we'd love to see you awesome and if you go out to the show say hey, say hi to john tell him you heard this cool interview uh what about starship you guys do weekend how do you manage those two starship plays all the time we probably do about 63 dates this year um man i i you know and i highly urge everyone to come out and hear hear the band if not just to hear you know mickey thomas kill because uh, mickey's got an, an amazing voice we do the songs and all the original keys, and uh, I mean, he, he's he's a he's a machine, man, but with soul, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, we play a whole. I just come out, and the, it's an incredible band. The, the the band is the players are smoking, and Stephanie Calvert's an amazing singer. She does the Grace Slick yeah. uh, uh, songs in the band, and they do it. It's 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 such a cool show. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, I'd love for anyone who's listening to come out and hear the band. We play. Uh, you know, 40 weekends out of the year, at Holy least we're at, by, by, the, the shows I would tell you about now, are, 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 since this interview is going to drop in November, it's pre-recorded, of course, uh, we're getting ready to play Epcot. I would urge everyone to come out and, and hear those shows. But the next show with Starship that, that will be on the calendar is in uh, Sal, 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 Sal Rita, Arizona, if I'm saying that correct, correctly, outside of Tucson, Arizona, November 30th. November 30th, Starship, Tucson, Arizona. That's on my website as well. That's the next day that I'll be playing once this interview drops. Awesome. So anyone in that part of the country uh, can come out and hear our show. And also, um, man, I didn't know this, but John is actually available to do uh, guitar lessons periodically. Um, the only thing is... He's only teaching intermediate and advanced people, advanced people, advanced players. So if he could do this locally, if you're in the Memphis area or online with Skype, and if you're interested, hit him up on, on uh, johnroth.com. It's J-O-H-N roth.com and go to the contact form and, uh, you know, maybe tell him a little bit about yourself. So, you know, he could see if it's a fit or something like that. I mean, he's a busy guy. So, you know, respect his time, which is all I would please ask you. And uh, talk about the Roth Brock project. Okay. Yeah. That's a record we put out on Terry Brock and I put out on, it was came out on Frontiers uh, two years ago, I think in this November, um, uh, Terry Brock is a singer that I worked with in giant, uh, we early in the interview, you know, I explained that, um, that we came in and, uh, played, uh, in giant together, Terry, uh, before played in, uh, did some work with Kansas, 
sing in a band called Strange Ways that Winger was a, a f- big fan of. And that's how Winger ended up getting uh, working with Mike Shipley, getting them to produce the Winger record Pull. Um, Small World, Rod Morgenstein played in the Steve Morse band with Terry Brock. Wow. Uh, Terry, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is a small world, man. It's a small world. Uh, I was having uh, breakfast with Rod. We were getting ready to do some pictures or video or something. We weren't get, we weren't recording, but he said, how's the giant thing going? And Because he knew I'd, I'd sign on to do this record with him. And I said, well, we got this uh, great singer named Terry Brock that's uh, going to sing with the band. He's like, what? You're, you're kidding me. Terry Brock said, I toured with Terry Brock. Terry sang in the Steve Morse band. I'm like, man, Steve Morse band. And I'm very familiar with all that stuff, with all Steve's, with Steve's solo records and the Dixie Dregs. I'm a huge fan. And uh, like, Rod, that's a, instrumental music. There's only a few songs that he says, yeah. He said, we we wanted to, uh, on the, the record we were touring for, we wanted to feature uh, a lead vocalist on two of the songs that one of which was re- were released on the radio. So long story short, Rod worked with Terry. Terry is a, uh, is an awesome singer, a uh, great songwriter. He and I worked together in giant Serafino Perugino, the uh, owner of frontiers records had been uh, contacting me about doing a, a record with him uh, outside of winger giant for a while. And uh, for one reason or another, this, the opportunity came up and a uh, calendar was a little bit open and we could figure out how to do it. Um, and I'd love for everybody to check it out. I'm very proud of it. Terry's a, a, a great songwriter, great guy to collaborate with, amazing singer. Um, we managed our time really well. We wrote every song on the record. None, none of the songs were farmed out. I produced it uh, in my home studio with the exception of the drums that recorded in Nashville at my friend Scott Trammell's studio. Uh, but it's it's an all original record. Uh, you know, a lot of these t- times when you got two guys or three guys put together, you know, long distance, the songwriting gets farmed out to other people, but we're proud that this is a homegrown musical project that we both wrote and, um, and recorded together. So if you get a chance, check it out. It's on frontiers records. I also have clips of this. I have a couple songs on my music player, at johnroth.com And I've got posts of the video of a song called young gun that we did, uh, which is on YouTube and you can link to it from my site. And what's the name of the record? It's just called Roth Brock Project. It's awesome. kind of a mouth. Awesome. It's a mouthful. The Roth Brock no, Project. I've learned. I've learned to say it quickly. Well, well, Kip Kip Winger always jokes with me about about that. He says, "Man, that's because he's said, mentioned it on on the gig before." He's like, "Man, that's a mouthful." And and Phil Bill. Well, like, compared to Winger, yeah. Compared to Winger, <laughs> yeah, Roth Brock Project. Yeah. Uh, uh, so my my buddy Phil Bennett, who uh, a keyboard player in Starship, he said. Dude, why didn't you just call it broth? You know, <laughs> broth. He, he said that that would have been. And I'm like, damn, uh, broth. Phil. I said you're right. You're right. I wish I'd consulted you because broth yeah. would have been freaking perfect. <laughs> but you mentioned a, that a band called Strange Ways. There was a humble pie song. You ever heard that humble pie song called Strange Ways? You know, I haven't, but Great. I know the Firefall song "Strange Ways" because uh, I played that one before. But no, I I oh, love Humble Pie. I don't know that song, song. Dude, but I will check it out because I dig Humble Pie. Steve Marriott, what Great. a killer singer! Yeah. Great song, man. Well, cool. everybody, I'll check out it. check out the Roth Brock Project, and um, you know, check out John on the road with Starship and Winger, and go to johnroth.com dot com and um, support John and his music, and uh, say hey to him when you see him in concert, dude. I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. I know how busy you are. Um, thank you being so generous My pleasure. pleasure's mine craig everybody thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed this interview please share it with a friend on your social media we channels we appreciate your support with that thanks again to john roth for spending time with us please support john and his music and check him out on the road and say hey and make sure you go to the home page of everyone loves guitar.com sign up to get on our newsletter list and most important remember that happiness is a choice so choose wisely be nice go play your guitar and have fun till next time peace and love everybody i'm out We hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, subscribe to the Everyone Loves Guitar podcast, and you can do this online at everyonelovesguitar.com or on iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave us a five-star positive review. The more five-star reviews we get, the higher our show ranks, and higher rankings mean we get to continue speaking with cool, interesting guests on our show. We'll see you on the next episode, and until then, keep playing your guitar and have fun making music. (music) Thank you.